Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you uh, to uh, our panelists. Uh, thank you to all the attendees who have joined this uh, exciting webinar. Um, quick introduction. Well, before I introduce, uh, I will let you know that this session is being recorded and that every attendee will be receiving a link uh, with, uh, with the recording of the webinar. Uh, so, my name is Niels de Mongran. I'm the uh, head of LED products at Roscoe. Um, and uh, to, on the top right, we have Nicolas Gerg, who is our product manager for, the, uh, for LED lighting for film and television. Hi, Nico. Uh, on oh, the top hi. left, we have Patrick Hagerman, who is from Belgium and is a gaffer uh, shooting films, hi. commercials, and TV series. Hi, Patrick. Uh, but we have Romain Lacourba. Uh, Romain is a cinematographer, a uh, member of the AFC, which is the uh, French Society of Cinematographers. Hi, Romain. Hi. Uh, and then in the right below me is Pavel Pogorzelski. And Pavel is uh, born and raised in Montreal, based in Los Angeles, uh, currently in Los Angeles, I believe. Sure, yeah. and, uh, also shoots is a cinematographer and shoots uh, mainly feature films, uh, commercials, and TV series as well. Um, all right, let's get started. So um, I'm going to start with Romain, and I wanted to ask you a quick question on uh, how you're doing and um, how has this lockdown been for you, uh, and uh, how do you see things moving forward for the film industry? Can you give us a, a quick word, please? Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm good. Um, lockdown, as as for everyone, was kind of a. I was in, in the middle of a show. We stopped shooting, and I I was in England, so I came back as soon as I could to Paris to the you know the beginning was a little scary for everyone. So it went okay. Um, the ideal time to catch up with movies and family time and uh, books and you know um, that sort of thing. It was it's long. Uh, it was long, but it's still a little bit long because it's not completely over. Um, um, but um, but I wouldn't say it was too bad. Um, the way I, you know, the way I see the future is it's really hard to tell. I'm, I'm convinced that I'm convinced that the that we will move forward, that the industry will will get back on tracks, and um, I only fear that. I mean, obviously. The safety is going to be a real issue. I, I I think that at the first few months they might have some. We may encounter some consequences about creatively speaking, maybe on some shows. But I think there's a lot of people who are also um, working to make you know um, the uh, uh, sanitary condition um, safe and healthy for everyone. So. I'm, I'm confident. It's just a matter of time, but, but yeah, I think we'll we'll get we'll get back there. But Have you got anything scheduled, like uh, precisely, or are we still in the big unknown? Um, for I, I was on on a TV show, an, a Netflix TV show uh, called The Witcher, uh, which stopped as everyone, as the whole world, and um, we don't know yet when we're gonna start shooting again. So in the coming weeks, months, you know, it's like the whole, all the rest of the industry. We will do this year, hopefully, but I don't know when. Okay. All right. Thank you, Roma. Thank you for your answer. I'll, I'll move to Pavel. So Pavel, uh, same question. How you doing? Has been locked down for you? And what's your thoughts about the short term, mid term, of your of your work? Thank you, thank you. I'm doing good. Um, it's been very interesting this whole lockdown. I feel like it's been like a emotional roller coaster where I started like being like, yeah, this like I've been lucky to work nonstop for the last two years, like uh, like film after film. I, I last year I had off. like twelve days off, I think. Um, so I was like, oh, thank God. I was actually on a movie. What am I? I was so excited about this film uh, with, the, with the South Park people, with Trey, Matt and Trey. I was doing their feature. 
And as we're loading the trucks, we get an email being like, you know, all right, start unloading. We're we're, we're shutting done. down. Oh, so no. you know, it was kind of like very very sad. Uh, but then I was like, okay, now I can do like a whole bunch of things, and I can relax and read books and ride my bike everywhere. And uh, I'm in Los Angeles, but I don't have a car. I only have my bicycle, so I ride a lot. Um, you know, and just do uh, exercise, and uh, and then it was like, oh man, this is kind of long, and you know, there's a few weeks of being like, this is kind of bad. And like, okay, they gotta get back into it. Let's do some renovations and construction, and you know, so it's like this Gardening. emotional yeah. roller coaster, <laughs> like being like up and down uh, for me because I'm alone here. So you know, it's kind of like uh, I've been going for walks with friends, so it's not that crazy, but uh yeah it's been it's been interesting and uh we found out yesterday that the movie is not coming back uh after after we get back because it was a very timely very timely like it had to come out uh in october and there's no way it's gonna happen and it was very like topical on on what's happening what was happening in the world back then but everything has changed and I know they tried to rewrite the script and they were like, this is just not. Uh, they were trying to rewrite the script to adapt it to uh, the... They wanted to adapt it, they tried for weeks and they just pulled the plug and be like, we're gonna scratch and, and, and start start over. Um, and I, <clears throat> I think, you know, I think what, what, what Romain said, we will get back together. We will get back to making movies. Uh, my one concern is, I think, you know, probably we might start smaller, maybe, I don't know. And then, uh, you know, as a DP, I strive to push to always get the best results and you push hard and work hard to get great stuff. And it would be sad to see, like, if you do deliver something that's good and they see, oh, well, they've done that for less, you know, like, let's just keep doing that. And it's like, well... It's just because of my nature that you want to push and get great stuff, but it's not, it, it shouldn't be that way, you know? So that's one of my, my fears of like uh, moving forward of like, you know, producers and studios being like, oh, let's just keep doing stuff. Less yeah, much. they're, good, they're good with smaller teams, let's keep them small. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, like, you know, we just, everyone worked so much harder to make it happen, but it's not necessarily safe in the long run or like you know healthy in the long run uh, yeah. there's a reason why we have big crews and you know moving big stuff at that speed so i, I don't know but we'll see i'm sure it's gonna get we're gonna get back to work and at what what, what way and what level i don't know yet i just did a a short this past weekend for netflix hopefully it's gonna come out they're, they're doing an anthology about coronavirus and they did like uh, 30 directors, and I did one with Anna Lily Armapur. Uh, we'll see if uh, you know if they choose it, and if it happens, uh, that'd be pretty pretty cool. And we did a, a little short, just me, her, and uh, yeah, a couple of GoPros and drone and you small little cameras and tell a little story. So yeah, trying to keep busy. Cool. All right, thanks. Thanks for that, Pavel. Patrick, moving. To, what uh, what can you tell us about this this lockdown and and how are things on the on the work side moving ahead? Well, concerning the lockdown, I can tell you um, we're happy here that it's the weather is very good for the moment. It's like summer, so almost barbecuing every day, uh, cooking, <laughs> gardening. Uh, maintenance a little bit of equipment, uh, do some small things around the house, like uh, almost everyone. But um, lucky also we are still healthy, we don't get the coronavirus, so uh, yep. that's the main thing to stay in our own bubble. Um, Work-wise, I should say, yeah, as for everyone, uh, all the projects are postponed to a later date. Uh, there were some projects on the shelf, but everything is postponed to maybe next year or maybe they don't come back. I don't know. Uh, it's possible. But uh, how is it going to restart? 
there are some intentions to start with smaller productions with small cost, very small crew, and that probably will start first again. Uh, so we have some probably projects in June, small projects actually, uh, small commercials, which, as I told, is very small crew. So, but I'm a little bit afraid, like Pavel told also, and uh, Romain uh, mentioned, that for the use productions, I still cannot figure out how we're going to work with the cost and the crew for the for the acting. It's I don't see how how they're going to manage it. You, you cannot. I, I mean, there was a test here in Belgium uh, for a, a national television. Uh, they did a test with a, a daily uh, soap. So they. They, uh, they reshoot actually uh, a certain episode, but with social distancing. But yeah, you see, it's not the same. It's totally different. And I'm afraid, okay, you can tell that story for a few episodes, but you cannot go on forever in, in this in this way of working. Actors, they have to they have to hug, they have to play together, they have to come close, they have to be far. They have. It's. I think we have we need we need. We need the time to. Yeah, we have we 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 have to wait because because it's no other solution than just wait and see what's happening in the future. We don't have uh, a ball we can look in. We don't have the looking glass to say, okay, it's going to be over in maybe next month, two months, three months. I don't know. And as we all know, we we cannot afford to take any risk because once you get started with the production. Now somebody get positive tested during the shoot. Yeah. Stops everything and everything you has to be. To, you better go back to zero. So yeah. it's really hard not to crack, but I think we have just to be hundred percent sure that the possibility is okay, you can start it to go. As I told you before uh, in the meeting, I'm gonna be happy once I felt the needle in my arm for the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be that probably yeah. Happy. yeah yeah let's hope for that for for everybody yeah. um, I think, thank you thank you for that patrick thank you thanks uh, for the three of you i'll uh, the rest of the session will be uh, uh, managed by nico you want to say something yeah hey hi everybody no no I, I want i wanted to shoot the first question but i realized that we have three hard working guys and they're all saying thank god we've got a break because we're working too hard <laughs> anyway <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, you, can't, you can't work and have only 12 days of not working per year. Uh, and also, if I may interrupt all three of you guys, it's, 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 uh, I'm happy for you. This, you this actually feels like a, a free retirement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It must feel good somehow. I like the gardening part. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in the same order. I'm going to do uh, Roma, Pavel, and uh, Patrick. Um, I really want to talk about, and this is not uh, Roscoe or Mix or DMG oriented, uh, Roma, uh, is, is really about colored LEDs and LED lighting in general. And we've, you know, I've, you know we've, we've been working for many, many years in the industry. You've seen the switch from uh, color and uh, from gel and, and digital. And, and uh, I tell, tell me a little bit about your latest package that you have in colored LED lighting and how and why do you use it on set? Um, so the, the latest where I, like most of the cinematographer, I do carry sky panels, bunch of, you know, value size. I, uh, I do carry um, SL1 and the MG because uh, I, my gaffer I work with in France, Stéphane Bourgoin, um, showed it to me yeah. three years yeah. ago. I, think I, I, I do carry some from time to time light gear, which are also very interesting units to me. Um, on my last project, I tried the, the Chroma Q. So I, I try to be open, you know, and, and try to, um, to stay alert and to try stuff as much as I can when they, when they, they come out and when, when I hear about it. Um, so, uh, 
the the fact that we are now in in times where uh, colored gels are I mean colored LED sorry are pretty much on every unit right um, listen I'm I'm a big fan of tungsten and HMI right but the thing is that since a few years we gain with the LED, the LED the flexibility um, less consumption power consumption and um, mm -hmm. And we all sometimes struggling with times, you know, and with and with and with budget. So the LEDs are improving so much that they they tend to give you what you um, what you used to see with the old times LEDs and uh, um, uh, tanks then and HMI. I mean, so I I don't know anyone to be honest. No, who, uh, who, no. I don't know any photographer who's not using LED, right? So so it's it's. It's really a question of, I mean, the cinematographers, I think, and gaffers, it's always a question of balance, of what what is the compromise you're going to make at the, the instant eye of, do I go for color quality or the color I want? How do you manage that? And I guess what you're saying is like was uh, for between uh, film and digital, is like you're you're getting more out of digital lighting now or yes or, just be, yes indeed just because the the quality of the leds improved a lot the past few years right uh because at the okay. beginning you know you know what i mean just because the quality of it on on skin tones with skin tones which is most of the time the most uh important criteria right yeah uh, it yeah. improves yeah. so much that that now you can find a few units that are extremely pleasing to the eye whether you shoot on film or on digital when you light the skin but um and and that's why I kind of stepped away from it for a few years, but now there is no real reason for it. Um, and also, again, the flexibility that, that it brings you when you want to uh, uh, play with the uh, RGB, you know, when you want to change color during a scene, for example, or when you want to go a little bit extreme on on uh, on in terms of color on a very wide surface. It, yeah. it, it, very um it's a very valuable tool that 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 would take a lot of of time to do on stage on a wide stage you know regelling everything between setups and so it's again it's it was uh to understand to, um, to, to try to answer a question in the most efficient way i think a few years ago for me it was only about being more flexible so it was picking up leds for a big overhead on stage, for example, like an exterior garden or something like that. Right now, it's it, it, it depends. It's for flexibility and sometimes it's for um, quality as well. Yeah. Does that answer okay. your question? Yeah, it, it, it does. But I have a second question to that. Is when 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 I was on set, basically you have you have your gel cart, right? You know, France. We worked in the same industry. Yeah. You have the gel cart, you have the 20 colored gels or 30 or 50. And if you want to gel everything, you pick it ahead, right? You have to pick it ahead. And if you put it on set and it was the wrong density, it's usually not the wrong color, but it's the wrong density. You're like, ah, you know, did it, did it give you the ability to work more with your instant in that way or, 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 or you you do not use that a lot at all. Do you work with your instant more because you can change a little bit, you know, more subtly, or not? I I so I I try not to use the um um how do you call it? Elec uh, electronic gel or HSI value. I try to work yeah. the old-fashioned way with gel just for just because I noticed during during test and what that's what test that for, um, that when you put a gel on on a light and when you compare it to the same light using the um, the uh, uh, HSI value, for example, it's not quite exactly the same. And just be yeah. because I'm a big, um, I'm a big fan, fan of, of colors and working with colors and mixing colors and mixing color temperature, you know, when you start to mix a lot of colors, things can shift quite a bit. And and so there's a little bit of paranoia in it, but not only just because I I witnessed the difference, you know, 
I just feel more confident and I know what I'm going to get if I put a real hard gel on either, um, uh, it can be a hybrid LEDs, but whether it's tungsten or, or, or HMI color, whatever. But I, I, just, I just feel safer. Um, so I'm more into, yeah, the old school style of, of gelling a light and most of the gaffer I work usually uh, do the same. Um, however, having said that, on, on specific situation, like what I said before, very, very wide uh, spread out area on stage, for example, or big overhead outside, whatever you, and you, you want to change the color during the scene and go, and then it's, it's a different matter. It's more about, um, and generally speaking, I think it's about the more you have a big, big overheads, the more the question of not hard gelling it uh, can be broad, but as soon as it concerns smaller units close to the actors, close to the faces, yeah. I would go for the job. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go with Pavel, but just just before that, because I was watching 000 that uh, you lit. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, tinting of shadows, right? You go into yep. a little bit of a cyan, a little bit of a green with shadows. Is that is that something that you prepped in post in in, in pre-production? Sorry, with the director and the the art director and the production designer, or is that something that you do in your gaffer, or is that something that you do on set? It's like suddenly you, you had the first shot and you're like, okay, that's what we're going to go for, or is that prepped? So the, 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 there's a little bit of both, but well, the first thing is to tell you the truth. Uh, Paolo Carnera, who was the, the main, the first DP on, on Zero Zero, established a lot in, um, in uh, working with his very talented uh, um, color scientist slash uh, colorist. Uh, his name is Red, Italian colorist, great guy. And so there, there was a lot that was slightly tinting the, the shadow, cooling down the shadow slightly. Yeah. Uh, but it was kind of a very uh, uh, contrasty and cool shadow base, right? And okay. so I would say that was where I, was, I, I started from. And then because I'm, I'm most of the time a big fan of cool shadows, it was about on set enhancing that and trying to pull the shadows likewise. Um, and and obviously pushing this a little bit with the DIT on set. And then to give a clear direction, you know, to the to to write the colorist. And then um, and and then yeah, and then it's about enhancing this a little more on the final grade. Yeah. Cool. Great, great. Um I want to talk for hours about that, but let's Sorry, hold on. Let's, let's, let's jump to Pavel. Uh, well, I'll call you later. Pavel, um, kind of same question. What's what's your what's your basic or usual LED package? And uh, and, and and really, did, did the shift that we have in color, like you had between analog and the digital film, the switch you had with colored LEDs, how did it change your work? It's um, <clears throat> I love having these tools. They're they're I mean they're amazing tools to have. Uh, you know they're like different shapes and different quality than you know what we what we're used to having. Uh, so the, so they give you a different quality of light also. So it's like an added tool to your you know to your tool belt of of, of tools that you have. Uh, where you know you can hide these lights in different places. They're uh, yeah. they're they're fast. They're little accent lights, uh, and you can dim them. And you know, there's such versatile tools I find to do like quick little you know pops here and there of like lights. Uh, you know, and like uh, I love how you know they're uh, like the Roscos are. Uh, the DMG lights are thin and you can really put them up in the ceiling and put the crate on and you know with a very small profile you can hide those lights in tighter spaces um, and with with pretty intense uh, output however like I do still carry like a, a full tungsten package and a full HMI package uh, for that quality of light which is also 
you know, very. So, so did your package got bigger with the LED, or did you have to compromise on tungsten and HMI to get a smaller package but have those LED lights? I think the tungsten package for me, the tungsten package went down, uh, especially on yeah. the smaller lights. Uh, but like a lot of the bigger lights, uh, I love the Fresnel, even like HMI Fresnels. I love the direct hardness of a Fresnel, HMI Fresnel. So those are still uh, some packages, uh, some lights that I use. And like Romain said, I still love gelling those lights. Uh, but it's great to be able to have tools, you know, that you bring in on set to like, you know, accent or push or extend that that light that's coming from outside that you know and you can just add a, a similar gel digitally that you you know you t in the tests you just make sure that you they match and you know that you don't just say like oh that's the gel and we'll just put that in you make sure that it matches and that it works well and uh so i mean a lot of this gel? Be, a lot of this happens double just, gel? sorry you use double gel between digital and uh, analog. You use the same gel on on tungsten and uh. I mean, yeah, and, uh, on, on, the, on the on the shows, the shows that I rem uh, the most recent shows where they were more available, the the colored ones. Uh, I wouldn't. I uh, I just you know if I have a sky panel or a mix, I test to make sure that that color matches the the color of the gel that I, that we have and we write that in and uh and then use that that color uh before that yes we double gel we gel the the bicolor ones uh but yeah a lot of this happens in, in testing and what's really cool i think is it's being able to set up uh when you do a test to find the colors that you like is set up a mix or a sky panel and find the, the, the color that you like that's going to work well for the show. Right. And from that, you can then also like find the gels rather than having a whole bunch of gels to test. You just have one light like, oh, yeah, I like this color. This color feels right. Uh, and with the direct, you're like, this is what we like. So then you can, you know, find that color that's going to match on the bigger lights, on the bigger units uh, with a gel and, and, and go that way, which is fantastic. Uh, so I mean, it's a it's a fantastic tool like i am always walking around with like an astera tube and like you know it, it's so much fun to be like this light could go and i just like to walk around and play and be like oh yeah this should go right here and then they go and clip it right there and you know you can like uh you couldn't do that with like you know a, a, a tungsten for now just walk around with a light and yeah, be like yeah, I know. I Right here looks great on this actor, you know. Because I, I, we started DMG with Niels's uh, older brother and Niels because out of necessity, because we didn't have the tools to be able to do that. Because you have to balance it, put a cardboard, uh, put a tungsten, and then you can power it with, you know, battery and all that. So yeah, it did bring uh, great versatil versatility. In and then once so. you set the light up with all that bounce and all that, you know, the the, the the gripping around yeah. it, you can't be like, damn it, I should have went two feet that way. It's too late. And with this new yeah. light, you just handhold it and look at the actor's face and be like, actually emotionally, like let's give her a little bit of a unpleasant lighting and it should be right there. You go, sometimes you're able to go against your instinct of where to place it by handholding so, it and being like, oh, this feels right. I, I, I agree, but that's, that's a great bounce question to the gaffer that we have with us, Patrick. Nice. Uh, because you're, because Roma and uh, and you, Pavel, you're talking about the package that you want, and uh, Patrick will talk about the Patrick the package that he's giving, <laughs> really, uh, in a certain way. So no, right, that's true, right? Yeah, so cool. same question is, you know, how do you use colored lights? Uh, did it change your work? But also, what I what I want to the point of view I want from you is how can you suggest as a gaffer that it's better to work with this or that knowing your DP or where do you make your compromise knowing your DP knowing Pavel and Roma that are going to say hey I just want hard gels to just put me over tungsten 
And you're like, yeah, but I could I could use Sky Panel on battery, and and you're not even going to say that to them uh, because you want you know a hard gel or whatever. But how do you? What's the package you're using? And how do you compromise with um, what the DP wants and what you can really give them? Well, um, first, uh, it depends, of course, of uh, in choosing a light package. Uh, like I want to, I want to work with DOP. Mostly, we choose after we did some pre-scouting or recce. And then we say, ah, maybe we can use this source here. We can use this line here. And then we start writing things down, small things down. Okay, HMI, uh, maybe LED. And we start writing, not making notes without choosing any package. And then okay. at the end with, uh, with, the, with my best boy, we'll see, okay, probably if we start for this LED source, who is very flexible, after we've seen all the locations, then, then we start to form a package with some HMIs or tungsten possibly, uh, a, a little mix. And then once we have a pre-list, then for us is to go to the production and say, here is our list. And then is the budget comes in the, in the arena. <laughs> then and you then pray start, for the budget to come oh, in. <laughs> is it so much? Yeah, but you only have this. And, the, and then we start, I go, we go back to the DOP. Okay, okay, let's let's take it over. Let's look look again at what, what we have, what you can do. And probably it's yeah, when your budget is unlimited, uh, you can go for anything you want. But for us, like here in Europe, it's most of the time this limited to some budgets and therefore also uh most of the times when you start the production when it comes to led most of the times i only choose one type either sky panels or uh as well ones or something else doesn't matter but start in the main package with one type of uh, one source um and of course, like Pavel told, with the, with the Astera tubes walking around, that's that's, that's something we, we do also. So that's very it's pretty funny he mentioned that. That's <laughs> it's something that's always a, for a little hair light, a little this, a little eye light. It's mm -hmm. quick. It works fine. Um, but uh, then again, uh, once you we have a package. Uh, and then it's of course a um, little bit looking for okay we have no let's say uh, x sources of led uh, hmi and then if you mention like you asked for for the jelly um on one of the latest projects i worked with uh, with a spanish dob with jose luis like uh, you know him yeah. Yeah. um yeah. He was Isn't used the, to work also with Brian Obama Obama like, movie Domino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he was used to work. Uh, he was one of the first uh, guys in Spain who worked with the uh, fluorescent dimmable lighting. So he he asked me when I met him first, uh, I want to do the movie with dimmable fluorescent lighting, and I said, Oh no! And I I see all the green and the magenta <laughs> and the dim, and I saw all the colors. Of the spectrum appearing in my eyes, I said, "Oh no!" <laughs> and then for us it was, but they keep talking. And then it, for us it was like, "Okay, maybe I have to to do some suggestions." And then I said, "Can we use some LED?" Ay, 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 ay. He said, "Yeah, LED, yeah." Uh, and then we organized a, a test, and we just did a quick. Run through to Kinoflow, DMG, Light Gear, Cineo, Ari Lighting, Velvet, and then for that project he chooses uh, to go for the SL1 because he says it's very flexible, and also because we saw the all the locations we have to do in tiny rooms, some riggings, so we could split the, the ballast and the the power supply yeah. uh, from from the panel, 
so they give us very for the grip the, the, the grips to make very easy uh, uh, light uh, riggings and uh, so we start working with that and then in that movie for the all the coloring we did with the sky panels we okay. used the ASM one and so, all the coloring we did with the sky panels um, it was mainly some effects, uh, cop lights, uh, police car, uh, and some blue, some so, blues. Yeah. So, so, so it's still a, so it's still very political as a gaffer. You get you you go scouting with your DP, and then you yeah, know. Of uh, I mean, and, and I I think it depends of the region you're in in the world. I know Roma. I don't know if it still works like that in France, but I when I used to work is like. The DP was was like I want this light here, this light here, this light here. As a gaffer, you couldn't do a lot, right? But what you're saying, Patrick, is more that okay, I want this kind of light. Then you're able to suggest the kind of light that will suit the most what the DP wants, right? Which which is more of a I think a, you know Northern American or English way to work, maybe. Yeah, of course, because like you say, we are in between. Just in between the DOP and the production, so it's we yes, think from, uh, from the left to the right, and we and we just have to yeah to keep the so, production happy and of course that's funny or DOP. I felt the Go opposite ahead. on my on my uh, I, I, you know on my on my end coming up from like independent like really independent movies guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, with trying to survive what I have and building on my own lights to, to make it happen. And then, you know, uh, in a matter of like a few very quickly winning, going up to these bigger movies and then my gaffers coming up with these big lists and production coming to me like, that's too much, we can't afford it. I'm like, yeah, no worries, we'll cut this, cut that, cut that, we're good. Because I'm just used with working with nothing. So now like having two M18s or like, uh, sorry, like uh, Ari Maxes. I'm like, what? What am I gonna do with two of these big lights? Like, no, it's just. So for me, it's been the opposite. Where like the gaffers bring these huge lists. I'm like, it's too much. I'm not gonna use that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. How, but that's not always uh, like this. Yeah, of course, it's not always like that. So, Roma, how do you feel about that? How How is your? Because we have Patrick that probably had more ease lately in terms of you know money and production pattern that comes from a more indie uh style of you know guerrilla shooting how about you um I, you know i think it really depends on the on, on the project i mean sometimes as as patrick was explaining sometimes gaffer end up being in between you know uh, the hammer i mean with, between the production and, and the dt and and, and uh but that, that that's mainly on bigger size project i'd say and yeah. and when you do smaller size projects when i smaller in terms of budget obviously then then yeah from a dp or from a gaffer that would be a little bit foolish to uh to get on the office with a huge list and because you know you're going to need to cut it anyway. You see what I mean? So I think it's also uh, you have to adapt uh, depending on what kind of project you're doing and, and and that's what we do all the time. I think we try to at least, you know, and and because you know that if you're asking for that on a smaller one, you're probably going to need to compensate with something else if you're really pushing for it. So, and, and that's why, I mean, that's where the... Um, symbiosis i mean the work working closely with a gaffer is, is very important because a, a gaffer to me is is uh, also a very creative asset you know i i i love designing uh, um, the light of a set with with a gaffer i think it's very interesting and some sometimes it's the gaffer and and most of the time only the gaffer who would come to you and say are you really sure about that because I might have a better idea, and and sometimes he's right, you know, and so that that's that works for the creative aspect of lighting a set, and that also works for um, the political negotiating part of our business, you know, where where Gaffer can also come to you and suggest, listen, I I, I get it, maybe let's try this light and that light. I know you don't like it, 
but maybe you should try it, you know, in a different space, in a, with a different color, with a different type of rigging, with whatever. Yeah. And um, and yeah, so so that Dude. makes. I think it's 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 important to try to challenge ourselves and not to stay only in the same uh, in our same habits, just because. You know, a light is a, a light is a tool. A tool is a tool, right? So yes, even yes, though I was yeah, thinking yes. I'm much more like old school HMI tank stain guy, which is true. However, um, you know, I don't know. Like for example, if you start doing tomorrow a, a science fiction project, the most interesting, one of the most interesting part is pre-production, extensive test, right? And you start again comparing all those lights, the light you know, the light you like, and the newer light and new features and everything. And who knows? You might find that. Uh, I love the stand, but actually that color with that funky LED make more sense for that scene or that movie or you see what I mean. So I think it's about yeah, yeah. Well, that that's out. That was so we're forty three minutes in and we've been at one question. That was my second question for you. Oh. But uh, I do agree. I want to say something to you, Roma, is, and to Pavel and Patrick is. Um, somebody asked me a question of what LED light I should use, and the first, the, you know, the first answer is first test it, and the second, whatever you like. If it's the lights from your smartphone, then use the light from your smartphone, right? It's it doesn't really matter. So, Roma, how if if you're using if you're doing a science fiction movie, how do you choose your lights in pre-production? How much do you work with the art director and your gaffer in pre-production? Do you how do you select the colors really more than the lights? How do you select the colors or the gels? And how much do you do in pre and how much do you do in production? That's and if I can great. add one and if I can add one thing to the question is in terms of language, when you're talking about color, is what a what what do you what language do you use? Yeah. Whether you're using you're using the gel language, whether you're you've embraced the HSI language or the X and Y use. Um, that'll be interesting to hear. Yeah, a great question. Well, I the way I do it since quite I mean since I tried it the first time, so <laughs> since a few years, I think. But it all starts with the with the discussion with the director, obviously, right? And uh, it all starts from the story, a script, and then extensive, you know, uh, uh, discussion with the directors. Sometimes directors are very interested in and are very into lighting. Uh, sometimes less. It depends, but it's always the starting point. And the way, the most um, um, efficient way that I find to discuss with the director, and also trying to get my head around what would be the most interesting color or 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 um, or visual aspect for a movie is which is the most difficult question right is to find a visual aspect that that is um, that that matches with the subject right that doesn't take over the subject but that does that pushes it sometimes but in any case that makes sense and and the most efficient way to me is to make some sort of mood boards so most you know collecting bank, bank bunch of images ideally when when you have a long time prep scene by scene and when you have less prep time it could be uh you know their location and to combine uh all sort of images that uh, capture for a movie but it could be also sometimes painting although i find it most of the time 80 percent of the time i think i would use um, uh, screen grabs and uh, and I think it's a great way because right away you can show it to a director um, and to a network or studio if need be and then start the discussion and it's not about you know making a combination of all of different styles but everything goes quite into the same style at least per scenes if you go per scenes but um, you know this one is maybe a little more cyan this one might be a little more greenish this one and at least um, either you're completely out of subject, which thank God haven't happened to me so far, but maybe it will, uh, or it you know it allows you to start a discussion with a director and say, yeah, the guy would say I like that, this I'm not sure, this, and then you can do a version two and a version three of that new board again if you have a lot of time. 
And once you're happy with it, you show it to your gaffer, and then it's an, another conversation from it about uh, how to make it, but also what does he think about it, you know? And that conversation could also come with the DIT um, before showing up on set, showing him the same. So yeah, that, that's how I that's how I try to process. Um, I, I find it very, um, uh, you know, it's a hard, hard, it takes a lot of time to make, but it's very efficient because there is very few words to talk about light and color, right? It's very, very hard. So well, it's, a, it's impossible to talk about a color if you're not, you know, twin brothers and have the same color in your head. That's, but, but, but that's interesting. So I want to join to Pavel in, in, in two seconds because we're, you know, and then Patrick will also have a lot of things to say. But what you what you were saying is that you're selecting colors based on a, a digital image, right, on the screen. But you know it's not going to be the same color than your light or your gel or your tungsten or so it's mood boards, but it's not really what you're going to get on set. No, true, but. If you watch this, like Sorry. for example, I do, I do that and I try to watch it on an iPad Pro, or and then I try to watch it at the lab again, okay. even if it's still images, to make sure we're not too far away. It gives you a broad, you know, kind of a spectrum yeah. that is kind of yeah. narrow, yeah. and yeah. then okay. it's not about, you know, that day on set we'll make exactly that like that picture, but you yeah. know, but it gives you a very pretty strong direction of but, everyone. I mean, but that's, you know, but that's, picture, that's yeah. what a, that's why it's called a mood board. Yeah, and exactly. uh, emotion exactly. board. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, sometimes you show up on a set oh. because. It, and sorry, I mentioned to uh, to uh, I mean I missed to mention someone very important who's obviously the production designer, and and it's yeah. very interesting to present that to the production designer according to the concept he may have showed you before, and to you know talk about it because you may be completely out of you know, uh, subject from time to time or for specifics, I don't know, location that you haven't seen or sets that are not built or yeah. so, so, yeah. Okay, I've, I've, I'm, I'm going to jump to the same question to Pavel. And then yeah, to I Patrick, agree with, but... with Romain, it's okay. such an yeah. important tool to get in the same page emotionally what you're creating and it's a tool you share with, with uh, a document you share with everyone that they'll, you know, uh, that they'll know what direction the movie is going to be evolving in, with the, you know, with the costume, with the makeup, uh, with the production yes. designer, and they usually have also a document that they'll share with you, and you can start comparing colors uh, in prep. And uh, you know, I've been, uh, I haven't shot a movie in the same place, and every time, you know, production wants you to hire locally. And I'm always up for it. I haven't worked with the same people, so I don't really have a crew that I'm like, these are the people I need to work with. Uh, so I'm always open to, you know, hiring. And I've been very fortunate to have amazing crews wherever I went and really people working really hard. So one thing that I do, I started doing on Hereditary, and I've kept doing it ever since, is... Uh, forcing the production to give me a day or two or three of uh, lighting tests. And it's like very close to a production, maybe a, a two weeks out or one week out. One week out is a little tight, but at that point I have the camera, I have the lenses chosen, uh, I have my colorist and we've created a lot. And also- you have your the colorist on set or you have your DIT on set? No, I have my colorist chosen of who's going to do the color. Wow. I hire them in cool. prep so they can create a lot for me. Uh, right. And then at that point, we, you know, I pass all that mood board information to, to my colorist. Uh, so we have all that information, camera information, and now we go into a warehouse and I usually have the production designer build me a tiny little set, like two walls with the window and then colors, you know, that they're going to paint all the colors that they think of painting to see how how all that reacts with the LUT. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, on Midsommar, you know, the LUT was like, it wasn't yeah. creating Technicolor three strip, but it was kind of emulating, it was a reference for us. It's, you know? pretty, far. Like, yeah. it's pretty close, sorry, it's pretty close. 
Yeah, we just and there was kind of an inspiration. Really... There was an inspiration for the for the luck. Uh, yeah, but you were really you were really contrast until they got to the commune, and when they got yeah. to the commune, suddenly it was kind of overblown because they all had those white dresses. Yeah, it was out of Technicolor in a certain yeah. way. Yeah, but guys, I want to interrupt for a second. We uh, yeah. on the because on the topic of the lots, Pavel, we have a question from a. Um, an attendee, yeah. uh, if possible, if we can give him an answer. He, he's mentioning that some LED lights have brought in um, lots um, programs inside the lights so that they would adapt to uh, camera sensors. And so as you learn about the, 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 the subject of lot, have you, do you have the experience of using a light that um, matches the camera sensor? and uh, have, have you done have you used that what's your feedback on that if you have used it i haven't used i didn't know that i haven't heard of that so something okay. I, I have to i have to test uh, okay um, it's like, the technology is way too fast i'm like uh, you know <laughs> the technology is Are the rabbit and i'm the turtle and i'm <laughs> trying to catch up to win the race we're all the turtles like can i well, can i ask kind of can i ask the question with to to patrick because it's very interesting to have two DPs and Patrick here, which is kind of like you got creative and production and technical, and then you have the guy that is trying to make everything happen. And that's your, that's your gaffer in terms of money, in terms of technicality. So do you, in terms of, in terms of color, is it imposed on you? Do you work with the DIT, Patrick, or, 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 or not at all? Uh, for the moment, not. But what you do is actually, uh, first, as you said, the DOP is uh, giving us preferences from the mood board, the colors you want. Okay. Either yeah. We make them analog, eh? or I mean, the old-fashioned gels, or digital with our LED. But it's always also if we know we have a lot of. Uh, I mean. It's very easy for if we're picking some colors in our full range LED source and we want to switch from color, it's one minute and you're another color. Yeah. If you have to regel everything during a show, uh, you have a 50 yeah. minute break, you know? Yeah. And most of the times, like Romain and Pavel said, we use the gels, the hard gels, we use them on the HMIs and still on the tungsten uh what makes sense and we can achieve nice results and we have to tighten them well up because for the wind then otherwise we have complaints from the sun guys uh yeah, yeah it's like this but uh as the question came in from the dit from the i think uh, in the future that uh, you as a as developer from uh, light sources you have to work close with the companies who build the cameras to share the data to see if you're in the gamut that you can work that you can achieve the colors that you i think i think i was doing that with the with with, with their with their uh, sky panel so if you see yeah, but they're, the they're, Alexa, they're, they're, <laughs> they're doing lighting and camera so uh, uh, yeah it's a little bit more difficult to share well, I know, but IP like that. On the, I think we're on a similar topic. We're getting a lot of questions from uh, from our attendees here. I'm trying to get a little bit of answers from from you guys in the last few minutes. Yeah, um, else. Most a lot of questions about the challenges of matching LED sources on set, and so could we have a quick words from uh, Romain Pavel Patrick on the, on that concept? Whether you have struggled in the past or whether you've uh, managed it and, and 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 if yes how please Romain maybe we start with you uh sure um okay to be completely honest if you are really really and, and that's only me right um, I never color wise and texture wise I've never seen a perfect perfect match in between both even if you gel you try to uh, for example between the tank stand and a led whichever led you know good one yeah. i've never seen the exact same thing especially now with digital times when you have a monitor on set and you can see the difference right away or even when you look at 
for example, the, the tests you do that Pavel was describing that we try to do in, in production, and then you would ship to the lab. And when you do this sort of comparison, to me, there's always a slight difference. Now, I, the question I, is- I, I, I want to stop you, Roma. I, I want to stop you. I think the question from, from, from the panelist, from the, uh, the attendee is, it's not really about digital or, or, or analog gel. It's about uh, two different LED lights to try to match oh, together. LED, is that sorry. It? Is sorry, that sorry. I thought it was between, sorry, sorry. Uh, um, two lights. Yeah, LED and LED together. How do they? Two LED uh, lights. That would scare me, but sometimes you have to do it. Uh, I mean, you, yeah, you do see differences. You do, I mean, by working, you know, trying to find the, the right gels and, the diffusion because it's not the same softness obviously on each unit and everything yeah, 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 yeah. I guess you could you could get obviously very very close now getting the exact same thing i, I doubt it so okay, then it does it matter but so you know. so then do you do you say to yourself um it's close enough we're in production it's close enough my dit tells me it's okay the colorist can manage and post, and then you give it to the colorist and post, and either does he say, I can manage, thank you, or does he say, are you kidding me? All right, that's, that's the real uh, question. I, How much work do you give to your colorist and post? And that's the question for less, Paul, less Paul, Paul, Paul and Patrick. <laughs> as, as less, and I, I'm sure Pavel and Patrick will agree with that, as, as less as possible. I mean, the whole idea okay. is to, yeah. you know, to, okay. to compose an image with the strongest direction as possible and, yeah. and, and as much input as, as you can from all the creative and, um, and, and not a, and not a milky gray row images. So I think the less work, the colorist has to do and the more happy we are right and it's more interesting it's more challenging yes, i mean of i guess with the green power right but then, well, then well, you give well, the opportunity yeah. to the colorist to make it better you know rather than fixing yeah, things yeah. he's just elevating things you know and that's that's, that's the well, beauty you buy in time that time that you have that's so expensive is yes. is 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 there to create and elevate your project rather than fixing it things that you said, let's just do it in post, let's just do it in post, right? So I think that's great. And I, I, I don't know, like, it's, it's a good question, mixing two LED sources. Uh, I, 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 I don't know, like, I always find like light from different angles also look different, you know, like if you have a light coming from mm -hmm. the front and the back, yeah, yeah, even yeah. if it's two tungsten lights, the tungsten light from the back will have it still a little, different shades so it depends how you use it and what you use it for and maybe it's fine for it to be a little different uh if it's an extension of the light then might as well use the same same you know if it's a sky panel outside and you're trying to extend it inside you know use also the same tool uh if it's something in the background maybe it's okay that it's a little different because it has a different angle of refractiveness of the color so it's natural that the light but, would be a little different shade or a different but shade. Has it, has it ever been a problem for you to use two LED lights with the same CCT um, on set and then you were with your colorist in post and the colorist was like, I'm sorry, Pavel, I can't match. It just doesn't work. I, I don't think I ever lit okay. that. Good, 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 then good. <laughs> good thing. And then, and then Patrick, um, do you ever go and post? How how uh, how close how close are you to colorists or DITs really? Uh, you we're getting the <clears throat> yeah we're getting the response from the dailies from the DOP yeah. uh, like once or twice a week some updates. Sometimes we have to adjust a little bit uh, a little things, and uh, but. Far than that, it stops for us actually. We never do you when you say you have to adjust. That, does that mean you adjust in production? That means you adjust during filming. Like yeah. you say, okay, in two days we have the same scene or the same uh, set. Then we, you know, lower the contrast or change the green. 
Yeah, sometimes if we go to same location, we try to make some notes, make a little drawing, a little plan, uh, see what we are on which levels, or okay. we try to make a notice a little bit uh, of the situation. Um, and then if something needed to be corrected, it's most of the time, it's something has to do with the color or with, you know, some brightness of some uh, practicals or most of the time the, but anyway, actually, uh, we don't have that much issues on that, but are we close to the colorist? It's our GOP. Uh, and, yes. Um, yes. But are we getting suggestions? Are we trying to answer? Are we trying to respond? If necessarily, uh, we're trying to work together. But do you get uh, invited to dailies? Do you get do you get sent the dailies files? Uh, sometimes get? we get them the dailies and the DOP invite us on. Sometimes we are on the mailing list. Sometimes not. But mostly the DOP. Uh, the latest uh, things we did. The DOP asked always to put us on the dailies on the list of the dailies who will forward it. Um, it's so strange that the you know production that wouldn't put the gaffer and the, yeah you know, the, the, that want to watch it on the on yeah the it's strange sometimes it's it's really it's very really strange but sometimes I just go to the computer of the DOP and then we're sitting there on the table <laughs> uh, uh, at the end of the day and then the days from the day before and then we have a beer and then we look at the dailies and then we chat a little bit what we can do better what we can do different. It's always a, like a growing process. Eh? It's you like like I, you're painting or something, and the painting is never finished. Actually, you know, it's always can always be better if you want. But sometimes yeah. you run out of, out of time, run out of money, and then it stops. But most of the time, it's I, I mean, you get where you want actually. Finally, um, but just a little response on Nicholas, his question about yes. you use different sources uh, on the set. Yeah. I try to avoid different LED sources on the yeah. set for the same purpose of use, but yes, as course. you said, a backlight, an effect light, that works fine. But the key light or the fill of something. I, th I think in general, if you're going for you know the lighting your green screen or 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 doing your backlight or doing your front light or whatever, you want to use the same sources, not because it's dangerous but because it's way more reassuring because you have to do it right and if it's you know if it's a couple thousand more then it's okay um but I, I, at the same time it, it's very funny because we switch from colored led lighting to managing pre-production to post-production color managing right now so I'm very happy, Patrick. You, you you're invited to uh, the uh, the dailies. I was as well, but they were in film, and uh, since they were in film and on DVD, then uh, the camera and the the grips and the electric department all gathered at the DP's room, which had the latest iMac or Macintosh because he was the richest guy on the set anyway. <laughs> so we all went to his place. Um, but it's um, it's 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 we have a, a a huge amount of solutions that we we have in our hands, right? As uh, pre-production to post-production, uh, but at the same time we have a lot of confusion because what is the gaffer going to do? What's the color he's going to put? What's the DIT is going to do? What is the what's the gel that's going to put on it? What is the colors going to do? Because the color is not going to take the DIT's word for granted. So it's a. I think it's a. It, it's a. It, I think I think it's a separate separate talk, Niels, that we could do, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? From pre uh, post production color grading, maybe. <laughs> we've um, we've reached the hour, a little bit over. Uh, so we we promised our attendees sixty minutes. So we've done. I think we've done well, and maybe we should stop uh, stop here. Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of questions. Uh, I haven't. Been to uh, treat all of them but we'll uh, I, I want to tell our attendees that we're going to be doing a lot more of these uh, that we're going to be learning from uh, one to another uh, we purposely decided not to have Q&A here to stay focused on on how our um, guests are working on set and how they're dealing with LEDs and colors and I I do believe that we've achieved that so thank you guys thank you <laughs>
Well, I, do, for... I, I do think it's pretty crazy to be walking around with your gaffer with the iPad and be like, yeah, everything is on a dimmer board now and be like, yeah, that's, dip, 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 that's dip, what dip. that's what I did for the setup. I had the okay, mix and cool. the yeah. mini mix. I had my phone. It's not crazy. It's, it's the future. Pablo. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot I, for your time. Yeah. Sharing your experiences. Thanks, Nico, for a great, wow. uh, great questions and discussions. And have a good evening, Patrick and Roman, yeah. and everybody on the European side. And Pavel, enjoy your day. Bye -bye. Just start. Thank you, yeah. Thank you everyone. Right. Have Thank a good everybody. day. Bye bye. And again, the, this was recorded and we'll be sharing it with all the attendees. So for the attendees yeah. that are still tuned, yeah. you're going to be making a link with the recording of this uh, session. Any questions? Any questions? Thank, cool. you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.